and launch the webinar. So good afternoon, everyone. This is our sixth webinar. We started last week on Monday via Four Generation for Education, offering free uh, uh, web free meetings online. Uh, today I'm so excited. Ali will be with us and he's going to talk about the IB Learner Profile from online school leadership. Uh, so we're so excited to see 100 participants online with us today. And uh, Ali, I'm so excited to work with you. Finally, we tried to do a lot of work face to face, but it didn't happen. So I'm happy to see you online today. Uh, from Qatar and I'm based in Dubai and we are going to share this PowerPoint presentation with, as you can see, all our participants from all around the world. So it's for you. Uh, go ahead. You can start your presentation. I think the following slide, I will give a reminder about how we are going to work. So we are going to use the chat. And while you are typing in the chat, make sure, please, everyone, Farah, choose all panelists and attendees. Rami from Egypt. So all panelists and attendees. Uh, and let's start. Ali. Okay. Thank you very much, Ali. So I want to quickly introduce myself. Hello, everyone. I'm Ali Hassan. Um, I'm from the UK. In fact, I was born in a city called Liverpool, if anyone's a Liverpool football fan. Um, however, I'm currently living in Qatar, working as the Director of Learning and Teaching at SEC International School, Qatar. I'm also involved in various roles for the IB, particularly for the MYP, PYP, and DP. And I absolutely love educational research as an educator. And something that's really keeping me in good mental and well being. Again, staying involved in fitness. That's something I enjoy and I'm very much passionate about. And it keeps me in sync. I actually started my journey supporting adults and children with special needs. And then I went teaching in the primary, secondary, and at the college level in the UK. I made my move to the United Arab Emirates in Dubai back in 2013 to my very first IB school, where I worked as a homeroom teacher in the PYP, and then I taught in the MYP and DP. Guess what? I still continue working in these programs passionately. Funny little story, actually. Um, so when I moved to Dubai in 2013, Ali Ezzedine was actually working at that very same school, right, Ali? And then no, he had left and he moved to Qatar. And 2016 came along and then I moved to Qatar to start a new role there. And then what did Ali do? Ali ran away. He went back to Dubai. So that's what happened. It's kind of like, catch me if you can. Some guiding questions here for this webinar which will help us direct our thinking in terms of leadership in our schools, whether it is face-to-face -face or online. However, we want to particularly think about online school leadership during these times. I would keep in mind that this webinar <clears throat> is not just for those working in IB schools. It can also be applied in non-IB schools. So we're looking at how the IB Learner Profile can be used in your school for leadership, what leadership actions or approaches do we need to take? What actions are the most important during these times in terms of the IB Learner Profile? What opportunities can arise? And most of all, what can be learned? <clears throat> so we're gonna to head to some questions here. I've chosen two themes. So you have noticed that I have used the PYP Trans to Speak theme here, who we are. And one of the NYP global contexts, identities and relationships, because we want to know where you are from and who you are. Over to the other Ali, who will help me with this. Okay, so you're going to get on the screen uh, three questions, and we would like you to answer on those questions. <clears throat> so please answer, where are you now? And we have the continent, Asia, North America, South America, Europe, Middle East, Australia, Africa. Please choose what is your role. Are you a teacher, coordinator, leadership, uh, or other? And then which IB Learner Profile attribute is the most important for you currently? So on the screen, you should be seeing now our questions. And please choose the answers.
it seems, Ali, we reached the full capacity of the meeting uh, where we have 100 person online, but we are recording it. So if you know some friends who are not able to join, uh, they will have the recording at the end. We were supposed to have everyone with us today, so I'm not sure what happened. Okay, I'm giving you a few more minutes to, or a few more seconds to fill the, uh, the poll, and then I'm going to give the results. So we're very interesting to see uh, these results and your thoughts. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to post the answers, Ali. Fantastic. And I'm going to share with everyone what do we have. So we have 55% are in Asia, in North America 1%, Europe 6%, 36% in the Middle East and 2% in Africa. 65% uh, they are teacher, we have 21% coordinators, and then 20% they are leaders, 6% they are in different role. And then the IB learner profile who got the maximum of the votes is open-minded, 43% open-minded. <coughs> Very nice, one of my favorites. Yes, so Ali, we can continue and then let's go to the following question. Okay, we can do. Thank you for that, Ali. I appreciate that. Okay, so on that note, let's connect. Use the chat box to type in one or two words to describe an IB school leader, but be careful here. Let's think about words other than just the IB learner profile attributes. For example, in terms of the learner profile attributes communicator, I would use the word transparent. Why? Because I believe in such times where teachers, students, and parents may be anxious, worried, you know, they may feel worried about the future or the unknown. I think it's really important that we are transparent in our communication with any information that will help or reassure others. And again, with this transparency comes honesty. So go ahead. And give no, it to go. Ali, and use the listen box. to what do we have. We have the following flexible, respectful, empathetic, approachable, decisive, innovative, adaptable, connected, decision maker, uh, inspirational, supportive Ooh, and like confident, that. trusting, again, inspiring, researcher, multitasker. Simple, problem solving, role model, and I have like six, 57 messages. So I think this visionary, confident, this is great. so plenty of words, forward planner, connected, patient, uh, caring from the IB learner profile, and uh, what I would, time management, so he's able to, uh, to keep, stay on time, he's calm, voila. Those are some of the words that I have in the chat for you. Fantastic, thank you very much. So here we have the IB mission statement. Uh, for those who work in IB schools, you will be very familiar with the IB mission statement. If you don't, that's fine, it's right there. But all IB schools align themselves to the IB mission statement. Usually you will see whether a school's own mission and vision is aligned with the IB mission statement. The mission statement is an agreement or a philosophy towards educational beliefs, values and practices that represent and support the IB programs and the learner profile. This involves learning and teaching practices, leadership practices and nurturing a school culture that mirrors the mission statement in action. Pause and reflect. You may want to refer to the IB mission statement here. Again, use the chat box feature to tell us your thoughts on how the mission statement should be reflected in our leadership actions and approaches for online school leadership. Think about, in particular, actions that reflect the mission statement. Whilst you are doing that, I'm going to go back a slide 
so you can refer back to the ID mission statement just to help you. So please go ahead. So and we use need that actions. Yeah, we need actions. What are the actions? And I'm remember those for... actions. They have yes. to they have to link to the mission statement. You might want to even draw out and choose particular words from the mission statement, which is right on the screen here. Okay, so Tala is saying they will still be rigorous regarding the assessment, uh, ensure clarity. Uh, they will continue to be lifelong learners. Uh, we will have more collaboration. They will nurture learning. They will offer ongoing support. Uh, they will show international mindedness. Yep, nice. They will model. They will have global discussions. They will promote skill-based learning. They will act as an agent of change. They I will can see how that reflects. I can see those connections. To new challenges. Beautiful. Okay, so those are some of the ideas from the chat, Ali. That's great. I can see how those responses do directly link with the IB mission statement right there on the screen. You can see how some of that links back to um, challenging, rigorous assessments, creating a more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. So what does the research say? There is some great research out there in terms of leadership in IB and non-IB schools. For IB schools, the development of an ethos or even a school culture relates to the mission statement and Ivy Learner profile, which is the backbone for every school, for every IB school, mission statement and the Ivy Learner profile. This is what it means when we talk about the development of a particular ethos that resonates with the IB. Of course, the IB offers that with its mission statement, doesn't it? Something to think about. Are schools and leaders truly reflective and representative of the mission statement and learner profile in action? That's something to think about here. Leadership that mirrors the IB philosophy and learner profile is crucial from our leaders, whether they are the head of school, the coordinator, subject leader, school counselor or teacher. We are all leaders of learning. It is rather interesting when we talk about the buy-in towards the mission statement and learner profile and how that is actually reflected in our actions and approaches as leaders. It's a way of promoting the mission statement and learner profile. You know, as leaders, we embody the mission statement and learner profile in action. When we say belief and support of the IB philosophy, what do we actually mean? Do we mean our leadership approaches and actions? our personal approaches, our interpersonal and communication skills? What about social and emotional intelligence? This is my favorite here, three favorite ingredients. It's like a cake, isn't it, almost? My three Cs, well, I like to call this a three Cs, context, culture, and collaboration. With the research in mind, we have to be careful about application. There is no best fit approach. I remember reading somewhere that said, just because you think it is the best, it doesn't mean it will work with the rest. Why is that? Well, we have to consider three C's. We mentioned leadership practices that impact student and organizational outcomes. This also means leadership practices or approaches that influence others around you positively and productively. If you look at each school, each school may have its own internal and external influencing factors, usually context, cultural factors and norms that may require us to adapt and lead with these factors in mind. When we say context, we think about where we are in place and time the environment, the country, 
the type of school we are working in and how it is run, what is culturally acceptable and what is not. So when we look at the IB Learner Profile for school leadership, again, it may look or feel different or unique in each school environment, but there are leadership practices, right, and commonalities that can link or go beyond or transcend culture and context. And these commonalities involve us to set directions, build relationships and develop people, develop the organization to support desired practices. What are those practices that we want in our IV schools? Concept, inquiry, project-based learning, based on skills, improve the instructional program. Is that something for us to think about here? Going back to the three C's, finally, collaboration. I always think to myself, don't lead alone or be controlling. I remember when I first took my post as a vice principal, um, a friend of mine told me, the higher you go up, <laughs> the lonely it gets. And this is something that I was um, you know, laughing about with Ali. And it doesn't need to be that way. You know, we don't have to be Mr. or Mrs. Know-it-all. Something else to reflect on is not allowing your ego to get in the way because we simply don't know it all. Collaborate. We are much better and stronger together through collaborative leadership. One of my IB colleagues, who is a trainer and consultant, um, Ali, you'll know her for sure. Her name is Kalfa. She's from Jordan. Wonderful, wonderful lady. She's in fact an author for the DP English B course books. She once said to me and others during an IB Educators training session back in 2017 in the UK, in Coventry, she said, don't allow your own personal professional experiences cloud your judgments. For me, that meant viewing and leading with an open mind. That notion is rather applicable here too, when we say that we must consider context. So this is our group leadership activity. Uh, before I share this with you, this was originally planned as a synchronous activity. And now when we say synchronous, synchronous we talk about you know, students who interact with each other, with their live facilitator, and amongst each other uh, through online means using Zoom or using Teams. However, those numbers went up, and Ali Ezzedine said to me, Ali, you're gonna have to adapt this activity. So we might have to go from synchronous to asynchronous. So this is what the asynchronous activity looks like. Um, you would have received a Google Doc link. If you haven't got it, you can tap in tiny.cc forward slash IBLP doc. But before you do that, stay where you are. Stay where you are. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I can see it. You're copy and pasting and you open up the Google Doc. Don't do it yet. Just stay right here. Now, this is what we are going to do. You're going to choose one or two learner profile attributes and you're going to link the possible responsibilities as leaders for online school leadership. Feel free to write in details. Now I'm going to share um, three attributes that I picked or I, or I wrote down. I'm not gonna read all this, don't worry. But here's an example. When I chose knowledgeable and then some of the responsibilities that go along with that. Um, for me, you know, I thought about keeping up to date with local and global news, health updates, um, being in sync in terms of the WHO, the World Health Organization, so we can provide accurate information to our colleagues, our staff, parents and students, because that information is really important, it's really critical. A second thing is getting to grips with technology knowledge and keeping involved in ongoing professional learning. These times are difficult, but guess what? Hey, learning doesn't stop, does it? Second, communicators. This links to communication with transparency and sensitivity. I'm seeing so much about communicating with transparency um, through these online blogs, through LinkedIn, through these online groups, and I do think it is so important. 
And this communication needs to model calmness and empathy. We are working in very critical times as well. So we don't know what's happening with our colleagues. Some people don't even share. We don't know what's happening with our students at home. Some parents might have lost their jobs. Some parents might have got um, you know, a decrease in their salary. We really don't know. So we have to be really empathetic here. And in terms of being principled, we have to ask ourselves about our approaches towards others and whether what we are doing is right in the moment or in the best interest of others in your care. It's about being openly humble and accepting that we really aren't above everyone else, but rather a part of a collective family, aren't we? Or a leadership team who takes actions for our responsibilities. So we're going to go back to the activity. Go ahead and now you can finally open the Google Doc and I'm going to open it as well so we can see what people are tapping into the document. And one two. Uh, so yes, I, I share the link as well in our chat. Oh, and great. Going, we are going to model now a small class activity. So imagine you are the teacher and in your synchronous class with your student, you have a focused group. So I'm going to ask for three volunteers who would like to join us, open the camera, open the microphone and do the exercise live with Ali. And then the other, you are working on it on your laptop using the link that we shared with you via the chat. So three volunteers, three risk takers who would like to join us. Oh, we've got people who are going ahead. Very good. Well, well, that's great. I'm going to bring some people to us here in the room. So. Yes. Tala, let me check if Tala is with us. So Tala, you can open your microphone and your cam. And then I have Kanwal as well. So I'm going to bring him to us, to our room. And then he's going also to join us. You can open your cam and your microphone. And then your third student, Ali, will be um, oh, isn't this great? Yes. Hi, Tala. Hello, hi. Welcome on board. Hello, Kanwal. Hello, how are you? Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. And do we have one more? Yes. How can I, maybe he can, you can introduce also yourself and then you do the task with Ali. So, and for the others who are working online, you have five minutes to fill the Google Doc. And as you can see, the people are very busy on the, uh, on the Google Doc. They are in an indeed, aren't they? Task. Yes. Okay, good. So Ali, your students are here. Uh, you have five minutes to chat with them about the learner profile in an online school. Go ahead. Correct. Now, before we could continue, um, I know people are working on this document. I want to quickly share. If you scroll down to the bottom of the document, I've included um, an example of a learner profile for school leaders. Now, this is actually taken from the old, the old, old uh, diploma program guide. And it's not included anymore in the new diploma program guide. And you can probably think why, because you know, each school has to really develop its own learner profile for school leadership. But it is there for everyone who is in this webinar right now, um, just to, you can use it to help you. However, for our task, it's been condensed in terms of the attributes and the responsibilities. So right now I'm going to be working with Dala and Kanwal and which one should we take? Should we, I'm, I'm going to go to throw over to Dala and Kanwal, which, which, which attribute should we take? We have as well Ali, how can, how can do you like to introduce Hawking? yourself? Yeah, hello, um, my name is hello. Hawken. Hi, I'm from Ivy School in Jakarta. Welcome on board. So you're also going to be joining us, so should we take a pick on which attribute yeah, sure. we would like to um, focus on? Shall we go on for open-minded since it was one of the okay. ones the most in the survey? Yep. Yeah. Is that good of Kanwal and Hawkin? Yes. For sure, yes, yeah. 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 Good Fabulous. One. Let's go with open-minded. So I can see some people are already um, typing into this box. So there we go. So what do we think? 
is required in these times, particularly for uh, online school learning and teaching? What is required of our IB school leaders? I mean, the, the leaders need to uh, look at the situation with an open mind, mm -hmm. understand the dynamics are different in terms of working from home for teachers. So understand their work from home dynamics, understand the home slash online school dynamics for students and families uh, because the, the outcome will not be the same as it is in the school. So in terms of our expectations, as a, as a leadership, I think we need to look at our expectations with an open mind. I love that. Yeah, yeah I think that's very important, isn't it? Because when we think about, when we put ourselves in a normal working environment, which is our schools, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, I remember at the start hearing about some schools just copy and pasting practices that they were doing in their schools to online. For example, Ali, we were, we, we were talking about this some weeks ago. You know, there were some schools that were copy and pasting their day-to-day -day scheduling for online learning. For example, having these one-hour classes and we just thought, no, that isn't going to work at all. So yeah, you have to adapt and be very dynamic in terms yeah. of the current situation. Yes. They also have to react positively to the change. Like, because it's a situation, it's a pandemic, it's global. So they have to think of more of innovative ways, think about um, like maybe share ideas or think of how things are happening in other parts of the world and be open-minded to, to try them, to see if they work for the school culture and to be adaptive. Okay, so Ali, it seems all your participants are on the document and some of them are facing problem in typing. So we are really a very big group. So please keep the idea in your mind or keep the idea in the chat. This document will stay for you after the webinar because uh, we would like from you to do this exercise with your teams at your school. So sometimes with the technology problem, uh, be flexible with us, be adaptable. You are just saying that we need to be flexible and adaptable. It's also the first time that we are trying new things using Zoom. So the people who attended with us last week, we are trying new ideas to make sure that it's very dynamic and it's very uh, interactive. Now, when we are a very big group, we are stuck. So be open-minded about it. Yes, be open-minded. Yeah. Put your answers maybe on a piece of paper next to you or in your mind. The whole idea is to practice nice activity. I'm sure if you are doing this with your student or with the teacher, you are not going to be a group of 100. And I know many people are waiting outside the room. So that's why, Ali, maybe we are going to request from you to do the session again. And remember, oh the, the, the session is recorded. So all the people who missed the session they are going to get the recording by the end of their day today and they are going to get the link of all the documents that we are doing so we will continue talking with you and maybe we continue that chat with Ali while the other are typing if they can mm. okay. yeah so here yes go ahead yes yeah, just, uh, I think that uh, they also thinking about open-minded they think about uh, the feedback from the parents and from the teachers, if things are working or not, and be happy to change them, to be flexible in that. Um, um, I think uh, most one more additional to that, Tala. I think uh, technology enhanced learning is not is is one thing that need to be addressed. So uh, I think leaders to be open mind and to receive and also continue to update which is a uh, i think kind of professional development should be there to learn and also um for example a lot of people facing zoom don't have many different i think uh, uh, tools uh, tools for example one of the breakout room where i think uh, collaboration is possible and besides that the um, share screen uh, to share certain uh, things like uh, online simulation. I think one is uh, uh, done by University of Colorado, uh, PhDs. They have uh, all type of science 
a simulation for free. So um, we, we can do actual practicals in a classroom. If you are a science teacher, then PHEP simulation is a fantastic way to actually to, to make the classroom active and uh, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Talking. Okay, so Ali, our five minutes are done. So we would like to thank Tala, Hokin, and uh, and Kanwal. Do you want to add any final uh, sentence or feedback? I uh, just thank you for organizing. Yeah. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. This is good. I think this is this is a very good opportunity for all of us to exercise the learner profile attributes. Yeah. Very yeah, good. Definitely. So now I would like from you to just close your camera and mute your microphone. So I'm not going to change you to attendee because I'm afraid that I'm going to lose you. And this is the whole beauty of the learning. So online world is different from face to face. We are modeling how things can happen with you and with your students. So, uh, and I think a, a, a strong takeaway from this webinar today is to see how we managed and how we changed a task from a synchronous task to a non-synchronous task. And as you can see, we faced problem. And as I always say, we learn from mistakes. So all our attendees who are joining us now and who are listening to us now, you are going to get the link again via email. So you will be able to see it and you are going also to find the recording on our YouTube channel. So yes, Amal, it's working now because maybe less people are typing. So, and we need to be very careful with this whole idea when we have a big group, maybe to make a small group session and we are modeling and we are learning with you today. So thank you for being very flexible, adaptable, and I'm going to continue with Ali now. And because we are going now to the last half of our workshop, I would like if you have any questions to type them in the question and answer section so we can go through them before the end of this webinar. So Ali, yes, let's wrap up. What do we have? Yeah, so find? yeah, let's check out what we have. Uh, let's check out what we've come up with. I'm going to go back to that Google Doc. I'm going to share it with you. And I won't be reading through it completely. I'm going to draw out a few because I'm wary of time here too. So let me just share that with you. Okay, so since I was working live on Open Minded, I'm going to pick out, let's have a look. I can see uh, caring here, checking up on staff in terms of responsibilities, their well being, very nice, showing that they are valued. Whoever wrote that, I think that's very important right now. <clears throat> I think when we are checking up on staff, something like this, you know, we have to really take a personalized approach um, for each individual. And, you know, it, it really has to be genuine. I can also see empathy. Oh, I can see an anonymous raccoon still typing away. That's fine. Uh, reaching out to the students, discussing with students their challenges. We have, a, we have to pay more attention to our parents' feelings of frustration. I think that's also some, definitely something to consider. Earlier on, whilst I was working on Open Minded, we were discussing that uh, we have to really take or consider feedback from all stakeholders. When we say stakeholders, we mean parents, students, teachers, each other, even those in your leadership team. What are they thinking? What ideas can they bring along? One more. <clears throat> I see principle here. Practice what you preach, teach. Very nice. Communicate responsibilities and acknowledge one's role and responsibilities. Values which can change with the surrounding environment having ethics and values, respect the way people interact with each other and the world, including Mother Earth. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to head back. So I'm going to come away from here. So, okay, Ali, before we do this, I have some questions for you. So uh, let's start with the first question. And then from your leadership perspective, it says working online gives the flexibility, but it seems to be seamless with no time boundaries. How do we overcome it? Hmm. So we're saying that 
for some people it feels very flexible, it feels very easy. I think that's, uh, that's great to hear. Um, many schools are doing well with it. Some schools, you know, the school uh, where I'm working with, it's for, you know, for us I feel it's going very well. The feedback that we've had from parents, feedback we've had from students, um, even members of the ministry, feedback has been really good. I think we have to be very careful in terms of this question here. We don't want to get too comfortable either. We also want to think about possible challenges too. I hope that answers the question. Okay, I have, uh, I have, a, I would like to connect this question to uh, the no time boundaries and how to overcome it to the IB Learner Profile Balanced. And for me, this should be your key, all our attendee, all our leadership team here, make sure that what you are doing is balanced and we are not really putting more pressure on us. Remember Maslow Pyramid, to be able to grow, you need first to satisfy your physiological need. You need the time to rest, you need the time to take a break, you need the time to eat. And if we are overloading our daily life, I think we cannot continue, especially if you are still working till end of June, for example, for all the teachers here working in the UAE. So we hope that we answered this first question. Let's go to the second question, Ali. How can we do that with student of four or five years old? So the early years, do you have an idea? Uh, do you work? Because I can't see the questions on my yes. end. So I'm going again, to Ali? ask again that question. How can we work with the IB Learner Profile with the five and four years old? I think we, this is about modeling it and differentiating it for their needs. Um, it can really be broken down. I would use synonyms. I think we can really use synonyms for certain attributes like communicator, principled, just to break it down for their level of learning. I think that's very important in terms of differentiation. And I would connect to what we have deleted, Ali, connect to the mother tongue of the students. So if they are not native speaker of English, you can work on the mother tongue and you can, yes, Elisa is saying in the chat, she's sending activities to support the learning profile at home. Oh, very nice. And uh, for Shireen, I'm going to tell her that we are having three webinars very specific for the early years. So wait for us and check our Facebook page to know when those are going to be scheduled. I have another question, Ali. So I was going to add, yeah. I was going to very quickly add, um, you can actually take away either later on, I, I believe a link was already shared for resources. You will have you you have an app you have access to this document as a resource so you are welcome to take it adapt it for your students it can be used for students adapt it to the needs of your school and your context if you need to translate it use it in another language feel feel free to go ahead and do that yes sally okay so this question how do we develop attributes like risk taker in an online environment when students are locked down for months and Tina, let me tell you, this is the risk today. So from asynchronous activity to asynchronous activity, yeah. people are able to join, people are not able to join, we are taking the risk and we are learning from what happened today. So next week when we are going to run our yeah. next webinars, we are going to pay attention to the mistake that happened today and taking a risk and take different approach and different uh, different uh, ways. Uh, we are saying that uh, some some person just wrote in the chat. You are very fast. The people in the chat. Uh, learning online is already taking a risk. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> this is from this. This is a risk for me. This is the first time that I'm actually delivering a webinar online. And believe it or not, I'm going to lie to you. I've been practicing. I've been practicing some of these keys. One of my best friends. Um, he's been on call to me, helping me out and actually teach me some tips and tricks just to navigate some of the controls on here. And, you know, that, that's something that we have to do. We have to really be open towards learning and adapting because in, in my current circumstances, working as director of learning teaching and as a, as a teacher, 
We don't know I'm how long the situation is going to last. I'm going to keep all the early years activity question for the webinars related to the early years. And I'm going to take a question, Ali, related to the CAS activity. So how do we extend the learner profile in an online mode when we are talking about the CAS activity? So it's about making the links, you know, if we, you can either take all of the attributes. Oh, I can see what the questions are, it's fantastic. Um, you can even just take one learner profile attribute. I think it's good to focus it. Again, this goes back to differentiation. Take, pick a specific attribute that relates well with the activity. So you can make genuine and real life connections. Um, even if it means that you know, we are working online, I think it's really important to find those connections within each attribute just to make it more authentic. I think that's the key, authenticity. Okay, I'm going to answer this question from Sujata Ali, who's asking how to ensure students are engaged in an online classroom. Sujata, you need really to know that some activities are done online with the student and they will be very interactive. And then some activities when you are planning, you are going to say those activity are asynchronous activity. And so I'm going to balance between those two to make sure that my students are engaged. And some people are answering the same question, uh, that are answered the same question that I just gave now, or they gave the same answer, making the balance I, um, I have a question from Samira. In virtual classroom, how we can support the social growth of our students? And here again, uh, I also had a chat this morning with a friend of mine talking about the social interaction. Maybe this element is the element that will be the least developed during this period, and we are developing other elements from the, from the ATL. You know, it's interesting. Just yesterday, I was speaking to my colleague, um, who's the head of school. I'm going to mention her name, Veronica. She's wonderful. Um, she was saying that actually, we are socializing still. It doesn't, we don't have to be there face to face. It's really important that we get to actually see each other. Um, you know, we are monitoring our students. We are, you know, we have the opportunity to see our students online. So when I pop into classes, I can see that my colleagues, they're saying to our kids, switch on your camera, switch on your camera so we can see you. I think that's important that we still get to see each other and make eye contact and actually hear each other. The more we can see each other and hear each other, I think that's going to, that can actually add to the aspect of, you know, social communication. And Good. I'm going to take the final question. And uh, Rania, Rania, I hope she's an Arabic speaker. We will have a webinar on that. So how to compensate for limited body language. And we will have a guest speaker who's going to talk about the body language and how the body language can be also analyzed via an online uh, learning. And this webinar will be in Arabic. And again, hopefully we can do it again in English for the people who are interested in this subject. So what's next, Ali? What do we have next with you? Okay, so let's pause and reflect. What do you want to stop as leaders? What do you want to continue as leaders? And what do you want to start doing? Use the chat box feature to share your thoughts and reflections. Once again, as leaders of online learning, what will you stop? What will you continue? What will you start? Feel free and go ahead. And you can um, choose okay. one question of the three. You don't need to answer the three questions. Yeah. But this is, again, we are modeling some routines on how you can finish a very interactive session online by those moments of reflection. So after this webinar, what would you like to stop or to continue or to start? For the people who are asking about the links, so while the people are typing, you are going to receive by the end of this webinar a link on an evaluation form. You are going to get a link about uh, the document and the activity that you've done during the webinar, and you are going to get a link about <laughs> the recording of the webinar. Now, okay. I have also someone asking how the names are showing anonymous on Google Doc. 
the people who doesn't have a Google account, when they go on a Google Doc, it will not, we will not be able to see yeah. your name. Yeah. And sometimes in the setting as well, you can do that. So for the people, uh, they are going to stop overloading information online. Yeah. They are going to continue be positive. They will start more activities and interactive activities via Zoom, like the poll and the breakout room. They will continue right. maintaining content, uh, contact with the school lesson and support the student emotionally. Yeah. I will continue to be more empathetic. That's what's very important, isn't it? This keeps coming up, doesn't it, Ali? Yes. Emotional I awareness, start, well -being. I will start e-books. I will stop over scheduling school activities. Start more parents' information session about the learner profile. I would say for the person who said stop overwhelming the student with too much variety, give them the choice. So keep the variety and give them a choice to choose one or two activity to be completed uh, during the week. Stop too much expectation. And yeah. the list continues, Ali, we have 35 new message. Uh, so I will try to be positive towards the online learning. I will continue to learn online. I will start a counseling session online. <laughs> Tala, I want to stop the corona. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> we're all praying, we're all wishing. We're all wishing for, again, being positive being very positive and I'm sure things will work out. Continue the breakout room, continue the collaboration, taking risks. So, uh, yes, we have, we have, the people are interacting very uh, positively with your exit card, Ali. I very will nice. stop being old fashioned. I will continue to be optimistic. I will continue working in small groups, giving choice stop being scared of the online learning yeah don't be scared and i think it's okay to make those mistakes you know i made yeah. some today believe it or not with the technology i'm not sure if you noticed but hey it's okay we learn from it continue to listen to the student yeah and it's very important that in terms of being a communicator just listen um i'm going to quickly share a friend of mine once said that just hear me out. I just want to be listened to. I don't need you to talk. I just want to be listened to. And sometimes that's all that people need. I think I mentioned that earlier. I will keep the connection with the family. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. So just before we completely wrap up, I have included uh, my sources that have been used for this webinar. And obviously I'm not going to read through each and every one, but you'll find these articles and resources through the resources link. If you don't have the link, if you didn't receive the link, you can take it right now. It's tiny.cc forward slash IBLP resources. I want to say, a big, big thank you, gracias, shukran, to four generations for inviting me to lead this webinar. It really has been a pleasure and very meaningful to me uh, to be able to connect with all of you during this webinar. Please check out fourgenerations4ed.com and follow on Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm not sure if you have any other um, social media outlets, Ali. And check out all of the upcoming online sessions and get yourself registered. Ali, the other Ali, can provide more information. Thank you so much, and thank you to all of you. Please go ahead and use this IB Learner profile as a tool for leadership in your leadership groups, with your students, in your teams, in your contexts. Go ahead and use it. So thank you, Ali, for this amazing interactive session again. Uh, I shared in that chat the YouTube channel, but again, in the email after this meeting, you are going to get all our social media. So uh, please, on behalf of both of us, 
uh, uh, let's say sorry to all the people who were not able to uh, to join but uh, it will be published it will be published on our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. All the recording are going to be uh, published on the YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much, Ali. I'm going to stop the recording here and we are going to stay for the next two minutes. If some people, they still have a question and we can no answer the question.